So what has 32 cores and 64 threads of absolute thread ripping power? Wait, that's probably it. I'm talking about the Threadripper 2990WX. <laughs> So while Zen was a powerful and efficient new core from AMD, the optimized 12 nanometer base Zen Plus cores would further strengthen AMD's processors just a year later. Until now, AMD only had the Zen Plus cores inside of their Ryzen second generation processors, but now they're bringing all of those cores to their Threadripper CPU lineup today. AMD finally launches their second generation Ryzen Threadripper processors with advanced Zen Plus cores. With the Zen Plus cores, AMD manages to bring their IPC on par with Intel's modern cores and use that CPU efficiency advantage to deliver a processor with multiple cores, 32 in fact, onto the flagship CPU and that's just the start of things we expect to see from AMD. On the screen is the entire CPU family under the second generation Ryzen Threadripper brand. The AMD Ryzen Threadripper 2000 series processor lineup would feature a total of four new HEDT processors. These will include the flagship Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX, 2970WX, 2950X, and the 2920X. The WX models are aimed at content creators and developers while the X series processors are aimed at gamers and enthusiasts. The Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX is what we're here to talk about today and it will rock 32 cores and 64 threads that will eclipse Intel's Halo product which will sport 28 cores and 56 threads. The chip is expected to feature a base frequency of 3 GHz, 3.4 GHz all-core precision boost, and a maximum boost frequency of 4 GHz, while the precision boost overdrive frequency is rated at an additional 200 MHz, so expect up to 4.2 GHz in single-core optimized workloads. This shows that Zen Plus cores can still achieve very high clock speeds even when they are jumped to twice as many of their previous flagship. The Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. Other details include 16 megabytes of L2 and 64 megabytes of L3 cache, which rounds up to a total of 80 megabytes of available cache on a single chip. The TDP of the chip, as stated before, will be kept at 250 watts, and the current generation TR4 socketed motherboards will be fully compatible with the second generation Ryzen Threadripper processors. When compared to the Core i9-7980XE, the Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX at $1,799 offers a better architecture based on a 12 nanometer process, 14 more cores, 28 more threads, and for $200 less since the i9 cost a grand total of $2,000 US. Comparing it to the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, we get 16 more cores, 32 more threads, and faster clocks at only $800 more. Even compared to the new Ryzen Threadripper 2950X, the 2990WX delivers up to 64% better performance in creation tasks, which is absolutely killer performance. Given the prices, it will be another great product for the high-end market and put Intel's HEDT market in a lot of trouble, which can cost in excess of $2,000 considering their new platform and Xeon prices. So for this review, our editor Hassan had access to the Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX flagship processor. Now AMD did not provide us with any equipment or processors for this review, and interestingly enough, we weren't bound by any NDA thanks to that. We did, however, just decide to wait to post this review. The motherboards were sent by ASRock, and we will be using their lineup until we get access to an X399 refresh sample in the future. We use the Threadripper 2990WX and use using the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming and the Tai Chi, and they'll be noted as such in the charts that you'll see. For the memory, we paired it up with Team Group's Excalibur RGB 32GB kit of DDR4 3200CL16, and as far as storage, we used a Samsung 960 EVO M.2 512GB drive. As far as overclocking goes, the maximum clock speeds that Hassan was able to achieve on the ASRock Fatality X399 Professional Gaming was a 4 GHz across all cores with a voltage supply of 1.31 volts. Anything above that was way too stressful for the VRMs and even have 4 GHz across 32 cores, simply a feat in itself. 
In this video format of this review, we'll be focusing on the CPU workload specific results. And if you're looking for gaming, check the link in the description below for a full rundown of these chips' rather impressive gaming performance. Throwing the first benchmark up on the screen now, we've got 3 Mark Time Spy put up some pretty impressive numbers for that 32 core beast, besting the Core i9 7980XE even when running at its stock clocks. The Fire Strikes physics test shows the overclock 2990WX coming dangerously close to that 40,000 mark, which is rather impressive seeing as my 1800X at 4 GHz barely breaks the 20,000 barrier. Now what about some real workloads here? We've got Blender Performance showing the 2990WX completing workloads insanely fast, even to the point that I would question the need for an overclock here since this one is pretty close without it. Cinebench R15 is a fan favorite, wanted to see where this shows, and this shows us that the overclock yields a very healthy single core score and a ludicrous multi-core score of 6,000. 6,000! Now onto Handbrake 8 4K H.264 encoding, and this is able to really leverage the cores here, and it's showing up in the form of over 69 frames per second. Talk about butter smooth. PC Mark 10 gives us an overall look at the benefit the overclock pro provides by showing the stock clock chip trailing the i9-7980XE, but once overclocked, it's able to tiptoe past it. POV Ray is another test that loves them cores and really flexes them thanks to the demands of ray tracing. And this is where the 2990WX beats the pants off the competition. SuperPi is a very single threaded dependent application and it shows the benefits of XFR allowing the stock clock 2990WX to squeak past the overclocked variant, but still interestingly enough falls behind the 1900X and the Ryzen 7 2700 in this test. WinRAR is one of those tests that really favors Intel, and boy does it show here. The 2990WX can't even come close to the Core i7-8700K in this one. But then again, they don't call it Thread Zipper. Uh, okay, my, my bad. I'll, I won't do that again. In the X264 encode benchmark, the 2990WX continues its dominance by leading everyone else by such a lead. It's kind of sad. Now, of course, a chip of this magnitude, you're going to ask questions about power consumption. Well, when it comes to power consumption, there's a few things that we should take note of. First of all, Intel has focused on efficiency for several years, but as we've seen, they're starting to lose rapidly on this front. The Intel Core X processors are based on the new 14 nanometer process, and we know this, that Intel generally has better fabrication process compared to their rivals. AMD, on the other hand, is using a refined 12 nanometer process from Global Foundries on their Zen Plus based Ryzen and Ryzen Threadripper chips. The Ryzen Threadripper chips are based on four dyes rather than a single monolithic die. And we've seen the effects of this temp on temperatures, but it's also critical to see how power management is handled on four separate dyes. All four dyes are connected through the Infinity Fabric interconnect. It is used to thermally manage the loads on different dyes. AMD Ryzen Threadripper WX processors feature a reference TDP of 250 watts, and we push the voltage higher than stock when running the chips in overclocked mode. For cooling, we use the Corsair H115i Pro AIO, Deepcool Castle 280 RGB AIO, and the Deepcool Fryzen Air Cooler, which are fully compatible with Ryzen Threadripper processors and TR4 socket. These coolers come in a large surface area making full contact with the huge IHS of the Threadripper chips. This huge contacts allow for better heat transfer to help cool the processor effectively. In general, the Ryzen Threadripper processors are based on the 12 nanometer process from Global Foundries which offers slightly better temperatures and power efficiency numbers when compared to Intel's 14 nanometer based offerings. While Intel went for a solderless design, the Ryzen Threadripper chips come with liquid metal thermal paste on each of the four dies that are featured on the, tread, the chip interposer. This refined thermal interface offers much better heat transfer than Intel's TIM, and the indium based solder design means that all air gaps are removed and the chip itself is tightly packaged so that the IHS can fully unload the heat from the dies and pass it straight to the cooler itself. Furthermore, the dies feature gold plating on the back to ensure proper thermal cycling, which adds to the thermal qualities of this impressive chip. 
The 2990WX is a beast in all ways possible, and its target market is a reflection of that. While the 2950X and the 2920X target the enthusiast gamers, the 2990WX and the 2970WX are aimed at the ultra, ultra premium niche, targeting developers, content creators, multi-thread heavy enthusiasts, and you'll be paying a hefty premium for this stunner of a chip. But if you just want that good gaming performance, I'd recommend to stay away from the WX series. In our results, we found the gaming performance to be good, but the X series will perform in similar fashion without the need to spending over a grand. So at the end of the day, the 2990WX is an absolute monster. It completely decimates its competition in actual workload, except for WinRAR. So I mean, if that's your thing, keep that in mind. And like I said, if you want to see more on the gaming front, hit the link down in the description below. We have the full article over there, as well as some more results that aren't included in this video. We hope the video, we found it entertaining and informative, and we'd love to see you guys back for the next time. So feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll see you in the next video.